here's a summary of what we'll be covering in this project today. We'll start with a brief introduction to the inverse design method. Then we'll be looking at the mainline design of a turbo pump stage. Then we'll see how the inducer and the impeller can be designed using the 3D inverse design approach for three different turbo pump com configurations. We'll also briefly look at a DOE based study of tandem inducers and then we'll evaluate the performance of the three turbo pump configurations based on a CFD analysis and finally we'll wrap up with some concluding remarks. So let's start with an introduction to the idea behind the inverse design approach which we use throughout this presentation. As you can see in this workflow these are the inputs that are used by the inverse design method to give us the final blade design. So apart from the, some basic parameters, these blade loading inputs are really flow related. And so once you have a good understanding of your specific flow issue, whether it's profile loss or tip leakage or cavitation that you're dealing with, it's possible to come up with guidelines on the optimum blade loading to tackle each of these issues. And actually this know-how has generality which makes it suitable for all your uh, turbo pump applications and so once what's interesting then is that you only need to rely on your knowledge of flow physics and then this method works for you regardless of your turbo pump size or which specific speed regime it falls under so this makes the entire process very intuitive and removes any empiricism that's commonly seen in conventional design methods. Now, let's look at the design of pumps in a bit more detail. So, across the specific speed range, pumps are subject to various flow phenomena and loss mechanisms which are dominant in that particular range. For example, as you can see in this specific speed chart, leakage and secondary flow effects are more dominant in the lower ranges, whereas profile losses and corner separation in diffusers take priority in the higher ranges. Also a phenomenon such as cavitation can affect pumps over entire specific speed range and uh, this is something that must be dealt with on a case basis. And in fact the inverse design method makes it possible to come up with a set of optimal design guidelines based on these fluid dynamic considerations of producing the dominant flow losses for your pump and this brings us to our problem statement so turbo pumps are mainly used in rocket engines and in industrial pumps with very low available inlet pressure and because the suction specific speed is very sensitive to the inlet eye diameter and the leading edge blade angle this makes a cavitation-free performance difficult to achieve using traditional methods. And in fact, using the 3D inverse design method, it's possible to quickly design various turbo pump configurations under industrial time scales and with a good cavitation performance. And in this work, we will look at three such configurations. So in the first configuration, the inducer is mounted separately on a pump shaft upstream of the impeller. Then the second one is similar but the inducer is split into a tandem inducer and a tandem exducer components. And finally the third one is a splitter type configuration where the inducer is an integral part of the impeller. <laughs> 